Now we start segment two of episode, four, episode 40. We're using a content-based approach to help intermediate level English learners improve their English. Now at the end of segment one, I promise to show you some ways to learn and practice vocabulary, the words you'll need for communicating about animals. Well, here's one thing that, uh, well, the way that I learned a lot of Spanish vocabulary when I was trying to master that. I wrote out the Spanish word, then wrote the English word beside it. While I know that it's best to relate the target language word with the object you're trying to learn, sometimes it takes this practice to remember words you're having trouble recalling. So here's an example of what your note card might look like for a Spanish speaker improving their English. Pig, el puerco. Cow, la vaca. Bull, el toro. Goat, el chivo. Duck, el pato. Sheep, la oveja. Hen, la gallina. And rooster, el gallo. So during those moments when you're waiting, those little spaces of time when you're not busy, pull out the card and review the words. If you see one of these farm animals, pull out the card and find the name in your home language. Then practice saying the English word for the animal. Now, if you see farm animals often, you'll find yourself looking first at the English word, which is why they're written first before the native language word. You see, you'll instantly see if your choice is correct. Then say the word over and over as you look at the animal or see it in your mind's eye. I used this method for years in learning Spanish. Another way to ramp up your English vocabulary is to use a bilingual dictionary like the one you just saw. Now here's a very basic and simple one. Now these pages are dedicated to animals found on the farm. You can see both the English and the Spanish word for each animal, plus some other terms having to do with animals. Of course, you'll want a bilingual dictionary that has your home language in English. Start by looking at your local library. If you find a guide you like, get one from a bookstore. Let's look at some farm animals and see how many you can name in English. So first, what we're going to look at is this animal right here. So this is, uh, it's a chicken, it's true, but because it's a mom chicken, a mother chicken, it's called a hen. And I've actually seen them do this. They spread their wings and let their little chicks go under the wings when it's raining. A pretty cool thing to see. Other animals we can look at right now include the pig. Okay, pigs are, are really cool. They're very intelligent animals. And if you look at the next picture of the pig, what you're going to see is a female pig, a mama pig, you could say, called a sow. And her babies, who are nursing, those babies are called piglets. So that's a sow with their piglets. And here we have nursing again. In this case, a baby cow nursing from its mom. We have a special name for a baby cow as well. It's not piglet, it's calf. So those are some of the English words. Now, when you get more than one cow in a place, you can just look at it and use the, the collective word cattle. You could say, oh, I saw cattle in the pasture. And there's some examples of cattle right there. And there's cattle in front of a barn. Now, this is a baby goat. Now, a baby goat is called a kid. So you're looking at a kid. There's a kid looking at you, <laughs> looking at us anyway. That's a kid. Now, this is a nanny goat. She's the mama goat. Okay, they call them nanny goats. This, of course, as you know from previous ones, is a dog from our previous episodes. Lots of farms have dogs. And here's a mama dog. Now, mama dog is called a bitch. And this is her puppies. Now, you have to be careful with the word bitch because it's a word that, that can mean a very negative thing. So I would just say mama dog and leave it at that. Now, here's some sheep. And sheep is interesting. If there's a group of them, you don't say sheeps. You don't add an S like most things for more than one. You just say, here's a group of sheep or a herd of sheep. And there's one sheep. The word doesn't change whether it's singular or plural. Now, here are some horses. And this uh, horse is, I'm, I'm guessing because it's with its uh, uh, calf, not its calf, its colt. 
that the horse is a mare, a female horse, and then the colt is a young horse. You can think of it as a baby horse, although as I understand it, a baby horse when it first comes out is called a foal. But anyway, there's a mare and a colt. And there's a horse looking at you, okay? So that's another example of a horse. Now, ducks are really, this is a mama duck or a hen, we call them a hen, and all of her babies, now we have a special name for the baby ducks too, they're called ducklings. And ducklings will follow their mom just like this in a row. I've actually seen this growing up uh, in visiting my grandmother's farm. These are llamas. I didn't grow up with them at all. They're, they're animals from South America. But I saw one this morning in a pasture. It was getting as far away from the cattle as it could. And so that's some great examples of, of some. Now, clearly, one repetition or two will not be enough to make these words your own. You have to keep practicing them. Now, don't forget the earlier animals we saw in the unit, the horse, the cat, the dog. Add today's farm animals and practice as soon as you see them or a picture of them. Now, learning these words now will set the stage for learning many more as the learning language functions that come with the study of animals. It's worthy, a worthy effort to get to know these words. Find pictures of animals in magazines, learn to draw sketches of animals and label them. So I wanted to show you these. These are kind of cute. They're, uh, they're a, uh, a model. So can you name these animals in English, having seen it? How about in your home language? Well, I'll show you when the camera comes back on. This one is a goat and this one is a pig. So keep practicing until you know all the animals, and these can have a lot of fun with your, with your kids, you know. <laughs> you know, like have some fun with them. Now, you're watching Ramping Up Your English on RVTV Voices. We're learning vocabulary, the names of farm animals, and this ends segment two of episode 40. We'll be back with some things we have to do to take care of animals on the farm in segment three right after this. What's a horse doing on Ramping Up Your English? We're galloping toward a new unit, animals. So we're in the country meeting some horses. Horses are just one of the many animals that will help viewers ramp up their English. So funny. Our Mr. Cowboy, you loving that? Horses, boy, I'm, I'm getting the flies. You see, horses have to deal with flies. Coming soon to RVTV Voices, a new unit on Ramping Up Your English, an educational support program for intermediate level English learners from all language backgrounds. So how can horses help you improve your English? Watch Ramping Up Your English to find out on channels 15 and 115 in Ashland and channel 182 on Charter Cable in Southern Oregon.